and pranayama. These are teachings of the written thousands of years ago, and this particular lineage of yoga, which is from the Bihar School of Yoga, they've written many, many books. And um, the breath is prana, means deeper than just breathing, because the breath brings in prana into the body, that is an energy, and pranayama is the way to control and move that energy through the body to heal your body. In yoga, a thousand of years ago, they worked out that there's 72,000 nadis or energy lines going through the body or meridians. Out of those 72, there's three main ones. The left nostril being called Ida. The right nostril is called Pingala. And Dakunda, the spine, is Shushumna. These nostrils change over in prominence every 90 minutes. So, we'll do an exercise there and you can have a sense of that. When they change over, there's a few minutes where we're in a place of Shushumna, which is perfect balance. I'm very passionate about prana and pranayama. So I've written notes because I can go right off topic and that was not in my notes. <laughs> so I want to stick to my notes. So the breath is the metronome of life. If we're upset, <laughs> we're breathing quickly. If we're calm, like when we wake up in the morning, the breathing is soft, smooth, slow and subtle. The breath affects the body. The breath and the, the breath coming through the nose is the bridge between the mind and the body. I will just go on topic to discuss about the Buddha. So the Buddha was a Hindu, yeah? So in yoga, there's eight limbs. There's the two observances, moral and social observances, that actually make you want to live a higher life of self-realization. The third thing is the asana, is the exercise, or the movements that you see. Those movements, if they're done with the breath, with a recognition of prana, it becomes a meditation of movement. A lot of people cannot sit still in meditation because their legs hurt or their back hurts or their neck hurts. So the concept is, is to do asana, movements, so the body can be still. So we're not disturbed by the body and we're not disturbed so much by the senses. The fourth thing is pranayama, which is learning to control the energy from the breath. The Buddha already knew that. He was a Hindu. He lived in India. He didn't, that was a part of his life. He probably started doing it when he was a baby. He focused on the next four limbs of yoga. The next one is called pratyahara, which is withdrawal of the senses. We use the breath to do that. We need the body to be strong in asana so the body isn't disturbing us. Then we can withdraw. Then we come to the next limb of yoga, which is focus. If we can get focus, and we do that through the breath, then we can come into a higher state of yoga called samadhi, or coming into a state of samadhi. So the yogis believe you need the whole eight limbs to get to a place of meditation. That was off track. <laughs> I'm not out of time because I'm sorry. So the aim of pranayama or just breathing in life is to have a long, smooth, slow and subtle breath without any force or any strain. The breath prana, is the most important thing in life. And if you're unwell, a doctor possibly will not ask you how you're breathing. Yeah, there's no money, is there? <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we can, the 
and they do provide, they prescribe antidepressants and all kind of things which actually slower or raise the breath rate to deal with depression. It's all really done through the vet, but it's done through the pharmaceuticals. So the first thing we do on this planet when we're born is we inhale. If we don't do it, we die. The very last thing we do is exhale. Have a mocktail. Have you sat with someone who's dying? I sat with my mother while she was dying. She was breathing in for a count of one and breathing out for a count of seven, eight, nine. It was such a long breath. All her life force was leaving. All her prana was leaving. So often we're not aware of our breath and how our breath is affected by our thoughts and our feelings. I think, for me, a lot of the time, when I'm around people, like now I'm not breathing properly at all, I'm holding in and anxious, and perhaps I'm creating an armour around my heart because I'm anxious to speak in front of people. So I'm not breathing slowly, smoothly, calmly, and subtly. Often we don't even know how the breath changes throughout the day. We don't even know that we're holding our breath. We don't even know that we're squeezing onto the steering wheel and not breathing or <gasps> how a fright. We, we're so unconscious of it and it's the most important thing. Without it, we do. So the left nostril and what Gio said, the parasympathetic nervous system, that is the calming. The right nostril is the sympathetic, that's the activating. So the right nostril, the gala, is heating. The left nostril is cooling. Some people run hot. At the moment, I'm running hot. So I need to do some cooling exercises, which would calm my breath, calm my heart rate, soothe my face, and I would calm right down. Other people who are running hot, the last thing I would do now is a stimulating breath, you know, which People who don't get the correct teachings may try a stimulating breath when they're a hot person, so they're overactivating their sympathetic nervous system and creating worse problems. It's very important to understand. This is this is the first. It's a, a um, it's a four part series, and this is the first part, which is the beginners, because they can go into very advanced practices and without. Having a solid foundation, you can cause problems for yourself. So let's now take a moment to connect to your nostrils. So close your eyes, get yourself comfortable so you don't need to move. And just take a moment to connect your nostrils. In yoga, we have what we use as a neti where we actually wash the nostrils out. Often our nostrils are full of gum if we're in pollution. So how can we breathe clearly? And how can we breathe clearly if we're sitting, sitting slumped? If we sit upright, we can breathe. So sit upright and just connect with your nostrils. Just take a moment, eyes closed. The reason why we breathe in through the nose is because there's hairs in the nose that clean the air. They also warm the air so that when it goes into the body, it's not a shock for the body. It's not cooling. Sure. So that's why we use the nose as opposed to the mouth. If we use the mouth, we use the mouth for cooling practices. So we do use the mouth. Single. So just connecting with your nostril. See if you can get a sense of which nostril is dominant. So you need to close your eyes, go inside. The breath is your friend. Your body is your friend. Come in. Don't be afraid of it. Close your eyes. Feel the breath in both nostrils. See if you can get a sense of which nostril is the dominant at the moment. Single. Is it the left? Or the right? Or are they transitioning? left nostril is related to the feminine, the moon, the cooling principle. The right nostril is the feminine. Oh, maybe it's the other way. Oh, no, it's right. Feminine. No, right is masculine. Left is feminine. Moon 
head, righteous son, masculine beauty. Just noticing which nostrils taking in the most here. So all living things have prana, and prana moves in several directions through the body. And prana can get blocked and it can create dis-ease in the body. So just feeling into the placement now of the feet, the sit bones, the buttocks, just making any adjustments to feel that you're balanced in the body. See if you can get a sense of symmetry between the left and the right side. Perfect balance in the body before we can get balance in the breath and balance in the mind. If the body's not balanced, the mind and breath won't be balanced. Take your awareness from the base up to the top of the spine. So follow the right up the spine and then relax your shoulders down. Spine is erect, head, neck and shoulders should be slightly back and relaxed and down. You can place your hands on your knees in what's called Rajaya Mudra, Rajaya Mudra, where you place the ring finger and the middle finger connected to the thumb. These two fingers have a direct line to the heart. If the sympathetic system is too activated, people may have high blood pressure. You can place the ring finger at the base of the thumb. By creating a mudra with the hands, it creates a sense of concentration and focus. We start with the body. The body is the easiest thing to discipline than the breath and the mind. Placing your hands on your lap with your palms facing upwards in Hridaya Mudra. <coughs> Just releasing the body and totally softening the body at the same time. Simultaneously become aware of the slow, deep breath. Bringing the awareness to the nose tip. Become aware of the breath as it enters and leaves the nostrils. Now count five breaths to yourself. The breath is your friend. Count five breaths. to your abdomen around the navel area. When we inhale, follow the breath through the nostrils down the back of the throat as it fills up the lungs. The body expands like a balloon expands with the inhalation. As the lungs expand, below the lungs, are a diaphragm. That diaphragm moves down towards the navel and the navel comes out. The abdomen area expands with the inhale and with the exhale just gently pulling in the navel area to expel the air out of the lungs. Keeping the abdomen soft and allowing that area to expand activates the nadi, the chakra, which sends a calming message to the parasympathetic nervous system. You mightn't be used to it, so you need to consciously take your awareness around the abdomen 
Get a sense of the diaphragm moving down towards the navel. And that area expanding, activating the sympathetic, the calming, soothing message that goes to the brain, goes to the heart, soothes the body. With the exhale, you gently pull in the navel, which expels the air out of the lungs, and the diaphragm moves up. This is the most important message I'll give you in this whole section, is to concentrate, make this a meditation where when you breathe in, the diaphragm expands, the body is calmed, and the heart is calm, the brain is smooth. When you breathe out, gently pulling in at the navel. Now I'll give you the second most important thing. There's a breath called the Ujjaya breath. It's a psychic breath. It's tranquilizing, it's pacifying, and it increases pranic capacity in the body. So we want to bring the prana into the body, move the prana through the body so it moves any blockages or any disease. This breath is called Ujjayi. It soothes the nervous system, calms the mind, relieves insomnia, reduces high blood pressure. It actually inverts the mind, creating psychic sensitivity. So, Ujjayi is performed by slightly contracting the epiglottis at the throat. Take the awareness of the breath to the throat, as if you're breathing out through a hole in the throat. Take your mind to the throat. Focusing on drawing the breath in and out through the throat. As the breath becomes slower and deeper, gently contract the glottis at the throat so that a soft, subtle snoring sound, like the sound of a sleeping baby, you can hear that sound within your head. By contracting at the throat, you're stimulating the carotid artery in the throat, as well as the vagus nerve system. Again, you're sending a message to the brain, to the heart and the body. The giant breath can be used when concentrating. This is the second most important thing for you to understand. Perhaps if you're not following it, Ask me in the Q&A. Just repeat this breath for another five times, listening to the sound of the Ujjayi breath, softening at the abdomen, body is erect and soft. Let's do five breaths. expands, like a balloon expands. The abdomen 
abdomen expands, the body lengthens, opens. With the inhale, and with the exhale, the body surrenders, softens, just like a balloon when the air is let out of the balloon. The breath is your friend. The best thing you can do for your health, mind and body is to connect with your breathing. The average person is never using the full capacity of their lungs. Generally, there is used and stale air at the base of the lungs. We'll now open your eyes and stand up and I'll show you three Prane Arm series. So this is before you even practice any of the more advanced techniques. So standing up, <laughs> waking up, standing up. Isn't it amazing when we connect with our breathing, we suddenly feel tired <laughs> and realize how stimulating life is. So the pre pranayama series is standing with your feet together. The reason why we're doing this is getting a sense of creating space so the lungs can expand with the breath. The lungs are inside the ribs. In between each rib is the intercostal muscles. They have opened up dead cadavers and found these intercostal muscles are like cement. If we don't keep using them, you'll see old people. They can hardly breathe. They're stuck together. So here's a simple practice. This is opening the breath up vertically. So we'll do three of these. So you just, we want to coordinate the movement with the breath. So when the hands move up, that's an inhale, because we're opening, making room for the breath. When the ha hands come down, we're exhaling. So just with your palms here, we'll do three breaths. Again, first, feel your feet on the ground. Get grounded. Feel the little toe, the big toe, and in between the toes, feel the heels. Relax your shoulders. And just roll your shoulders up and down. Relax them down. Notice where the weight is. Is it more towards the toes, the heels, the outside, the inside? Just get the balance. Balancing on your feet. With the next inhale, remember you've just learned about softening the abdomen and letting it expand. You've also learned about contracting at the glottis to get the Ujjayi breath. If you can combine that with this movement, so inhaling. Hands slightly behind the head and then exhaling down. So with the inhale, the abdomen expands. With the exhale, we're slightly pulling. So two more. Slow, subtle, smooth breath. And one more. Notice, feel the sensations in the body. This is a meditation of movement, connecting the breath with the body, mind, body, breath. Now we'll do opening horizontally. Inhale, open, breathe, exhale, close. Can you still do the Ujjayi breath? It's only for you to hear. It's your gift. Abdomen soft. Arms go up. With the exhale, slightly pull in the abdomen as you exhale all the air. Coordinate the movement 
Now stand still for a moment, come into your body, love your body, listen to it, talk to you. When we practice yoga, we can actually tell if the body's getting sick or not, because we're constantly coming in and listening. How is your breath? Is it soft? No forcing it, no strain. Hard and soft. So our third movement is crossing the arms. Softening at your abdomen, checking where the weight is. Is it more towards your heels or toes? Is there weight on the little toe, big toe? Are the knees soft? Is the tailbone tucked in? Is the spine erect? Are the shoulders rolled backwards? Is the head stretching up to the sky, but the shoulders are relaxed? Get the body aligned first, and then we move to the breathing pranayama. So this breath is inhaling, taking your arms up. Exhaling, hands to the side. Coordinate the movement with the breath. Inhale, arms up, soften the abdomen. Cross the hands. Exhale, arms down. Pull in at the navel. Relax the shoulders. Breath is soft, only you can hear it. And again, inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Crossing your hands. Exhale down. Body is soft. Movement and breath are coordinated. One more. Inhale up. Exhale to the side. Inhale up. Cross your arms. And exhale down. Standing now, with hip feet apart. Feet hip width apart. If you put your feet together, and if you go like this, with your feet, where the toes are touching, have your toes touching. Then if you go there, you have hip width apart. Easier to balance when you hip width apart. Take your mind down to your feet. Notice the balance. Knees are soft, they look straight, but they're soft. Tailbone's tucked in. Spine is erect from the spine up to the top of the head. Shoulders are relaxed and down. Let's take three breaths here and just notice what's happening with your breathing. I hear a lot of people yawning and sighing. Can you soften your breath? Can you get more breath in? The body's trying to get more breath in. A yawning or sighing is telling you something. Keeping your arms closed. The purpose of that breath is to create better breathing pattern, patterns. So I've got two more breaths to show you. Let's see if we can get that. If you lie down now on your back with your head facing the center, have a cushion on your head, lying on your back. 
placing your hands on your abdomen. Lighting the sun looks like a nice thing over here. Hello? shoulders down from your ears and create a little bit of space between the shoulders and your ears. You can place your hands on your navel area, placing the hands around the navel, and inhale deeply, and notice if your hand rises as the abdomen expands with the inhale. The diaphragm is a strong muscle membrane which separates the lungs from the abdominal organs. If you're breathing fully, the diaphragm will move down towards the navel and the abdomen will expand. This will activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which will be calming and soothing. And messages will go to the body and disease may not result if we keep the body in harmony. This practice is called the full yogi breath. We're just doing the abdominal part of this breath where you're just focusing on the abdomen, raising the abdomen with the inhale. Feeling the abdomen expand with the inhale and contract with the exhale. The second part of the full yogic breath is an awareness of the chest. This time you keep the abdomen still and when you inhale, breathe only into the ribs. You'll feel the ribs will expand, the rib cage will expand, they will move outward and upward that the abdomen remains still. This is the second breath. Just moving into the chest. Are you able to just only have the breath in the chest? Can you feel those intercostal muscles between the ribs move as you inhale? The lungs are underneath the ribs like two balloons. You want the ribs to move you want the intercostal muscles to remain elastic. We'll now combine the three breaths, where when you inhale, the abdomen will expand, and the chest will expand, and you'll take the breath up to the clavicular area, up around the shoulders. So a three-part breath. This is a full yogic breath. As you breathe in, the abdomen expands, the chest expands, and it comes right up to the shoulders. This breath may seem very simple and not worth remembering. In my 40 years of yoga practice and teaching, this has only just dropped into my awareness of how this is the basis it is so important, which is why I'm so passionate <laughs> about it. I never got it before now. I hope you've had a sense of that. Do you breathe together or one Yes, yeah, so other? what you're doing is the breath as you inhale, it's going down the nose, down the throat, opening the lung, filling up the lungs, and then it, the abdomen expands. With the exhale, the abdomen contracts and the breath comes out. It's the full yogi breath. It requires concentration. It is a meditation on its own. Okay, because some people are having, I'm hearing yawning and sighing, or I was, 
I want to now explain to you a practice which can help with that, which can actually expand the lung capacity. We'll also give you control over the breath. Normally we're breathing into the, we're just doing, if we're not doing a full yogic breathing, we're breathing into the brain stem. The brain stem is our prehistoric thinking. It's our animal behavior, it's our survival. Most people are in the brain stem. Our whole media, everything is in the brain stem. They're activating the brain stem. If you want to have higher level thinking, you need to move the breath from the brain stem to the frontal cortex. That's where you'll have intuitive thoughts, wisdom, outside of this fear based. And we need to do yogic practices for that, pranayama practices. So this breath, calling the Loma, it's called the Loma, it has three stages. I'm just going to introduce to you two stages. Like I said, this is a four part process just to understand the very, very beginnings of breathing. Slowing down the breath also develops relaxation, it slows the heart rate, it reduces blood pressure and it improves digestion and balance. So with the body fully relaxed, you can have your hands at the side or wherever is comfortable now, coming back into that full yogic breath. This breath is about interrupting the inhalation as if you're going up a set of stairs. So you breathe in a little, pause. You breathe in a little. You might have about three or four pauses before you've reached your extent of inhale. And then with the exhale, you just completely exhale and soften. So this is stage one. With the inhalation, like a set of steps, you inhale, pause, inhale, pause, inhale, pause. Just count how many you can do. Inhale, pause, you might get up to five or six. And then a slow, smooth, subtle exhalation. We'll do that another four times. Inhaling, four rounds. Practicing, Paloma, technique one. Inhale, pause, keeping the abdomen still. Here it's reach your maximum in smooth, slow, subtle exhalation. Just do some smooth, slow, subtle breaths. I'll now explain to you Veloma Technique 2, where you do exactly the same thing, except you interrupt the exhalation. So a slow, smooth, abdominal breath, inhaling completely. Then with the exhale, the same number of pauses. Exhale, pause. Exhale, pause. As if you're going down a set of steps. After the exhale, slow, smooth inhale. Ujjayi breathing. Soft, subtle, quiet sound. Abdomen expands. Pausing on the exhalation. At 
And then stay still on the fours. Abdomen expands on the inhale. Shoulders relax on the exhale. And when you finish, just placing your hands by the side. Let the body breathe naturally. The most important thing about pranayama is no strain, no stress, softening. Now feel the weight of the body touching the surface of the floor. The weight of your hands on the floor. Hearing the sounds outside. Move from one sound to the next. Sensing the space the physical body is occupying in the room. The space around the body. Experience the breath now around the nostrils. Breathe deeper and fully into the abdomen and chest. Bologna actually increases your lung capacity. Experience the breath around the nostrils. Notice how the pressure of the body shifts with the breath. Bringing your awareness to the shape of the room. placement of the windows and doors, see your position in the room, remember the time of day, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Always to come up we roll onto the right side where there's less pressure on the carotid arteries and the heart. So rolling over onto your right side. Taking a moment to come up, standing. 